folks, lunch is over, and after some contemplating, uh, in my mind, like I say, a couple things um, that I don't like. I don't like the fact that it doesn't drop out with it unplugged or with another substituted value. Like I say, you know, it's hitting with a test light to change the value of it, removing the sensor from the equation. It's, it's happy. For some reason, I think the sensor is going wonky. What it has to do with RPM, I have no idea. Um, I think the best thing to do at this point, uh, perhaps, uh, see if we can run down to the salvage yard, maybe just grab another sensor. It's, I, I just, I have to know. Um, I don't want to make a call on an ECM doing something crazy when I can't really get it to do it unless it's plugged into the sensor. So that's super weird. I uh, don't have an explanation for it yet, but I think that's what we should do. So we're off to the salvage yard. I gave a call down there. They have a few of these escapes uh, that should have the fuel tanks still in them, either underneath them or in the back of them. Uh, so hopefully we can just uh, snag a sensor here. Just something's not sitting right with me about this. Um, like I've already mentioned, so I'm not going to go over it again. Just kind of bizarre, oh man. I don't have no idea. The part, the other part that bothers me is what's the deal with the, uh, you know, with the RPM? Why is it at 3,000 RPMs this does this, but not with any other any other value? You know, open circuited, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. Can't explain everything. Didn't even have to drive out back. This is an 04, and I was anticipating driving out back, so I did not bring a screwdriver. I only bought a pair of cutters. However, in my truck, I got my old Leatherman, so I'm hoping that this little guy has a Phillips head on it. Oh man, this one handed business sucks. Let me put the camera down. use one of these things there we go look at that sweet all right we're gonna be here for a little bit but we're not uh we're not out to dry good thing i had this in the truck i forgot all about it that's what i like to say when i called them they said that uh the tank should be laying in the back of the vehicle or whatnot so they didn't dawn on me to bring a screwdriver if I drove a Dodge, I'd have a full set of tools with me at all times. Boom, look at that. There she is. Let me go get my choppers. Get the mouse now. We could, oh, oh, there's the mouse. There he is. Poor little guy. It's all preserved. Come on. Come on over here. Let's have a look at you. Let's have a look at you. Bam. favorite this place there we got it baby right, before we do anything fancy we should uh, <clears throat> we'll just plug this in so technically we don't have to hook it to anything because this is just reading atmospheric pressure anyways so we should be able to just leave it hanging on the wire and this will give us a proof of concept but I'm Highly suspicious of our other sensor, but I don't know why. All right, let's grab our scanner. Oh my gosh, getting absolutely bombed today. Come on, what's the matter with you? This is wrong. Now they want to know why I don't use this scan tool. Alright, so we're reading the same voltage at 2.6. Get you guys out of a glare. Man, I got a terrible glare in here. Okay, let's see. Moment of truth. Oh. This is super, super weird. It's got to be in the ECM. Crazy, crazy, crazy. 
I didn't mean to look like a parts jockey there, but just something really, something still is not sitting well with me because it won't do it open circuited and it won't do it with a substitute value. Why does it only do it when it's at atmospheric pressure? You know what, that's something we can do. We can pull a little vacuum on that uh, sensor, change its value and see. Because this is super, super bizarre. Um, I mean, you know, I'm still leaning. I mean, we did circuit checks. Our ground's good. Our five volt reference never leaves. Our wire from the, you know, from the ECM goes back there. It's not shorted to ground. Um, it's not shorted to another circuit or we'd see it. It's gotta be an ECM. So just, just for the heck of it, I put a little vacuum on it, you know, just change the voltage slightly and you can see it still, still drops out. make a difference but I just wanted to try it all right guys I'm back uh, getting absolutely obliterated at the shop today uh, so finally got a chance to step away for a minute and I uh, want to take this uh, escape on a drive because I want to see does it do it also going down the road just trying to get some more clues more pieces of the puzzle because this is just not making sense um, there's just something that's not sitting right with me about calling ECM even though it seems I guess would seem blatantly obvious, but uh, so we're gonna uh, set, up, set the scanner up here. We'll take it for a little drive, you know, 3,000 RPMs. You know, we just do it in first gear just to see if anything is different while we're moving. All right, so just sitting here idling in gear, getting the camera set up. We can see we got one little uh, one little glitch right there that just happened, but no cars coming here. So I'm gonna put it right down in first gear. Let's see here. Oh yeah, there it's gone already. We're not even at 3,000, are we? Oh yeah, we are. So I'll just hold it right there, that RPM. A lot easier to do while we're moving. Let me get it up a little bit higher. Then it kind of comes back a little. Right? No? You know what? I bet the dang sensor come unplugged when they pull over here. It took off. I realized I didn't even have the dang thing plugged in, but I think it's not plugged in all the way. Or so it seems. Let me just reach back here. Can't, uh, can't reach it real good. The connector plugs in like super hard. Is that good enough? Alright, probably good enough for our experiment. Find out here in a second if you're a big crash. It's gone. Yeah, so obviously driving it really makes no difference. All right, interesting. Okay, that's all the data I wanted to get. I just wanted to see just to be sure. Head back to the shop here. Turn the corner here again. We should be able to hit another 3,000. Sorry about the glare. I'm trying to hold the camera's drive and not dial at the same time. Hold on, big corner. Yep, beautiful. That's all we need to see. Well, folks, I haven't got beat up this bad in a really long time. Uh, t today was just an absolute catastrophe I guess for lack of a better term uh, not you know absolute disaster it's just we had a huge car count today so just trying to keep up with everything and fiddle with this in the meantime I don't even know where we left off uh, I'll try to pick up from where I thought we left off which is making the call on the ECM um, before I did that or before I 100% settled on that it really wasn't sitting good with me because of the fact that when we hit 3,000 rpms that's when it did it and that's really really weird uh, so I was chatting with uh, Keith over at New Level uh, a lot of you guys know him he's got, got his YouTube channel and uh, you know personal friend of myself and Ivan and I was talking with him because he sees a lot of wacky stuff he's never seen anything like this before 
Uh, so we got talking, you know, kind of looking at some stuff, telling them, you know, where I was at with my testing, you know, just kind of bouncing it off somebody. And that's, you know, one of the best things you do, especially if you got a good friend, uh, you know, like Keith, where we can, you know, kind of discuss, you know, what do you think? What about this? What about that? Uh, so needless to say, I tried to, you know, work through my process here to tell you guys, of course, I'll show you what's going on and show you what I did. Um, you know, the 3000 RPM mark was, was key. And that was key, you know, sitting with key too, like, yeah, that's just too, that's too fishy that that does that. Um, and the fact that when you unplug it, it doesn't do it. When you substitute a voltage, it doesn't do it. Uh, you know, that's, that's super weird. Um, and that was the part we kind of kept going back to looking at diagrams, seeing what else runs off the five volt reference, you know, for that, uh, system. Uh, we did some stuff like unplug the DPF which runs off that five volts, the problem went away, which didn't really make sense. You know, plug the DPF back in, unplug the TPS, which runs on that five volts, the problem still existed. So, you know, we're thinking, you know, some stuff about resonance in the DPF sensor because it uses a piezo crystal that can create its own electricity. You know, is it vibrating at the, you know, perfect harmonics that send voltage back, you know, down that wire, goofing stuff up and so on and so forth. So that was kind of the discussion. Um, I ended up, I scoped the five volt reference at that RPM, at that 3000 RPM, the five volt reference goes bananas. Even though when we looked at it earlier uh, in the video using, you know, just, uh, you know, the graphing multimeter, it showed it perfect, but on a lab scope, you know, where we could pick up the signal a little better, you could see it was going nuts at the same exact time. So then I got to where I'm at right now in a kind of roundabout way. Um, I wanted to know where's this noise coming from on this 5 volt reference. I'll show you guys the noise, of course I'll kind of pick up, but I had no real way to recover my video. Um, <laughs> it's just, that's just the way my day's gone. Um, so I'm thinking, is the noise being put out by the ECM or is it being received by the EC, you know, received back through that wire? Is that wire acting like an antenna? You know, is it picking up secondary ignition? Um, you know, is there some, something going on there? Unplugged all the coils on the back of the engine, nothing. Unplugged all the coils on the front of the engine, nothing. It still has this crappy signal um, at 3000 RPMs. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys. So I'll show you what I did. So we come over to the ECM, this brown with white, this is the 5 volt reference being put out by the ECM. I wanted to know, is it being sent out or is it being received? Best way to do it, cut the wire. No, no two ways around it. Uh, long story short, the crappy signal is being sent back. Even when there's no 5 volt, you know, you open this, you open it up, there's no 5 volts. You know, here this is just, this wire is just hooked to the, to the sensors. The, the signal is being sent back on this wire. It's just, it's picking up this resonance. Uh, which is super bizarre. Now, what we can do is I can show this to you, find out where I'm hooked up here. We'll, uh, I'll show you what's going on and then we'll kind of take it from there. I'm sorry, this is not my normal video style. All right. So right now, this is the five volt reference that's back at the fuel tank pressure sensor. And that happens at the same moment that it's dropping out. So I'll get these side by side so hopefully we can see this. Let's see if we can get this to do this. So that's happening at the 3000 RPM mark. Uh, so my big question was, all right, let's kill the five volts. It may, not, it may not like this very well. So we no longer have five volts going to the throttle position. We don't have five volts going to the DPF. We got five volts going nowhere.
RPMs are gonna be stuck because it's throttle position screws it up. Okay, I just wanna make sure it's gonna come back down. But you can see that that crappy signal is being received back up through the harness. Super, super bizarre. And that's where I'm at. Um, and I just, I really can't get past that. Uh, if I scope the, if I showed you guys scoping that 5 volt reference coming out of the ECM, it, it stays pretty clean. And so that right there, I can't really explain. Um, if you unplug the DPF, that signal gets better, actually. So, um, you know, again, you know, talking with Keith, you know, man, what's, you know, what's the deal with this? Uh, you know, it's not making sense. You know, and at this point, I'd already tried to unplug any kind of, you know, EMI type device that would, would, would reproduce this signal. You know, and that's when he suggested I'm plugging the DPF, seeing if it's feedback out of DPF. And indeed, the majority of it is. So, needless to say, that doesn't fix the problem. You know, the, the DPF, like I say, has a piezo crystal that can make its own electricity and, you know, certainly can feed back, you know, up through, you know, back through the 5-volt reference because the sensor is still plugged in. Um, let's see. And then I'm just frustrated, uh, to say the least. So I was, you know, just really trying to hatch out like what, what could be doing this, what's happening at 3000 RPM. Figured, you know what, I'm gonna go home, get some sleep, think about it, figure it out in a dream, wake up at 2 a.m. and come back down here and fix it. And I'm getting ready to walk out the door and uh, at this point, you know, I'd already gone through the whole data list, like at 3000 RPM, what changes? Is the purge solenoid kicking on? Is, uh, you know, is the canister vent opening? Is something changing? Is the duty cycle on the alternator? Is something, you know, something going, something's changing at that point. And I was just getting ready to leave and I was just getting ready to walk out my truck and it dawned on me, I'm like, wait a minute, you know, power steering pressure. I uh, didn't see a data pit for it. I didn't see, you know, a power steering pressure switch data pit. And I'm like, you know, it's gotta be a five volt sensor. That's a five volt, you know, open close. You know, we got too much pressure, not enough, you know, so it bumps up the idle air control. So I came in here. Unplug the uh, power steering pressure switch. Problem solved. But, but, I'm wrong. Uh, it is not a 5 volt sensor. It actually works off its own 12 volt reference. And the power steering pressure switch is bad. And that is what's wrong with this car. And I really don't have any other way to say it, but I got lucky. Um, and, you know, I'm not this super tech that everybody thinks I am or, you know, portrays me to be, I simply got lucky on this. Um, and that's all there is to it because I was just thinking what causes, you know, what happens at 3000 RPMs, what can be going on. Power steering pressure switch. Uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, I scoped it out. It's a normally closed switch. It goes open when there's high pressure to bump the RPMs back up and what it's doing is it's shuttering, I guess for lack of a better term. Um, when the RPMs go up, the pressure's increasing uh, in the system, and then the switch just starts to shutter at, a, at an extremely fast rate. I assume at that point, the ECM doesn't know what to do with it, and it goofs up the ECM, you know, internally. It's for some, somehow connected through the ECM, it screws up the fuel tank pressure sensor. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I know that's what's happening and I can prove it. And um, that's all I can tell you. So here's our power steering pressure switch that I assumed was a five volt switch, which it's not, it's 12 volts, uh, 12 volts in and then that 12 volt gets pulled to ground. Um, so what we can do is we can look, we'll, we'll continue to look at this signal, we'll unplug the switch and I'll show you what's happening.
let's have a look at that power steering pressure switch. So that, this 12 volts here, when the switch is closed, it's supposed to be pulled to ground. switcher. So open circuit, it works. Let me uh, see if I can do this. Hard to do this one-handed. So I just come across the two pins. We're going to hear the idle reduce also. Probably get a jump wire. Ah, come on. I'll set you guys down here for a second. Hold that right in there. You can see the voltage gets pulled down. Put it out. Well, now we can't see the voltage gets pulled down because we're not even probed in there, dummy. I'll tell you what, I gotta set you guys down. I can't do this one-handed stuff. There, we can see the voltage gets pulled down. Pull it out, goes high. Leaving it open, we got no problem. Jumper it like it normally would be. All right, so there's no. Oops. There's normally closed. Open it back up. Plug it back in. It's the problem with your evap system so that folks is that um, I hope I recovered this diagnosis a little bit uh, in the video ultimately in the end the car is fixed fuel tank pressure sensor goes nuts power steering pressure switch the fix explain that one the only thing I can figure is the ECM cannot handle that signal coming in from that power steering pressure switch um, you know, it doesn't know what to do. It goes in at that high frequency that it's doing and, you know, the ECM goes haywire. Uh, again, I got lucky. I thought it was a 5-volt sensor. And, uh, you know, logically I was thinking, what's changing at 3,000 RPMs? Certainly power steering pressure, and that would be pretty consistent. So I thought, why not come in here real quick before I go home and lose sleep all night? I'm probably still going to lose some sleep. Uh, but, anyhow, even if it seems humiliating to make this video. I'm still gonna make it, still gonna post it. Uh, we can't know everything, can't know everything and why. Um, I'm glad I got a good friend like Keith to kind of bounce stuff off, come up with ideas, um, talk me down out of the ECM, <laughs> just because it seemed too, too persistent, too consistent at that 3000 RPM mark, uh, you know, to kind of keep checking, keep going further. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful for my sake because if I put an ECM in it, I got to eat it. Um, that's just how it is. If I put it on part and I'm wrong, guess what? You know, I bought it. And, you know, there's no, no way around that. Uh, that's just the way it should be. Um, you know, you're paying somebody to diagnose it, paying somebody to fix it. That's the way it should be. You shouldn't pay for somebody's guess. Um, even though it was a really good educated guess. But we would have got burned. Uh, we would have been right back to square one. So needless to say, I've got one wire repair to do and a $15 pressure switch to change. <laughs>
Uh, and then I got this video I got to put out, and uh, hopefully you guys don't pick on me too bad and uh, take it easy on me. But like I say, every dog has his day. Today's my day, and uh, we'll get the next one, I'm sure. And if this ever happens again on any of these, I got it. It'll be a five-minute diagnosis next time. Uh, I've never seen this. Keith has never seen this, and that says a lot. Uh, the guy cranks out about 20 plus cars a day uh, down in Staten Island. If you guys don't know him, I'll link his YouTube channel here. Uh, I'll put it at the uh, end screens and down in the description and all that stuff. Uh, fantastic guy. Uh, brilliant when it comes to this stuff. Uh, when it comes to you know super crazy weird diagnostics, he sees all kinds of crap down there. And I'm sorry this video is a lot of talking and not a lot of uh, showing, a lot of fixing, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. And that's how it crumbled today. And uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment box below. Uh, good, bad, or ugly. Hit the thumbs up if you still have faith in me. And uh, hit the thumbs down if you don't. And uh, I don't blame you. So it is what it is. Google Plus, Facebook, Patreon. You can find us all those places. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it and get lucky, you can too. Thanks for watching.